Hello. Hey, Paul, how you going? Good, mate. With Mark from Moz Customs. Yes, Moz Customs. But with a typical nose, nose impact, we've got some sort of damage on the top, but of course the board flexes, and what we end up with in reality is, is, the, is a bit of damage underneath. So if we have a look, you know, the damage up here is virtually insignificant. What's happened there is with the mast hitting the nose, the paint's just fallen off. This here is still watertight, um, and by the way, I drilled that hole there to make sure that no water had come in, but not much damage there because the paint's fallen off, but what we got here is a crack, and this is the more significant part because as you can probably see, there's a little bit of movement there. The foam hasn't gone soft, but there's enough movement there that we're gonna to need to re-glass at least this area here. And then I've left it nose down in the sun for a bit and no, no water came out, thankfully, otherwise we'd be doing this in two days time. Okay, mate, so what do we need to do a repair? Well, um, four ounce fiberglass. Please do not fall into the trap of buying the Bunnings stuff that's called chopped strand. It looks like all random strands in all different directions. Four ounce woven fiberglass cloth. For, for anyone overseas, Bunnings is our hardware yeah. store. Oh, yes. So basically, yeah. okay. The, an, off cut, be... an off cut from any surf shop. Now when I say four ounce, two will do, just double it up. Six will do. There's, there's all different weights. You can get away with anything. But four ounce is a very standard surfboard cloth. And in reality, we're not gonna use very much of it. So an off cut from the local surfboard shapers or you can buy it online. Epoxy, and I'll say it again, epoxy. Do not use Bunnings Hardware Store resins because it's going to be a polyester resin. It's old school surfboard construction. It's going to melt your board core. West System is really, really popular. You can get it all over the world. That's why I brought it out. I personally don't use it because it's a five to one mix. So you have to measure your hardener really well. I prefer clear surfboard resins that are a two to one. It's much easier to get a, an accurate measurement of your mix. Having said that, of course, you can only buy kinetics in big quantities because it's a surfboard manufacturer. Something like this, or if you're in Australia, Boat Coat in Queensland will sell very, very small quantities of a quality resin that's mail order. So think about them. Uh, what have we done? Right, gloves. Measuring cups, nice and easy, because we, but we have to be very, very accurate. I'm only gonna measure 15 mils for doing that glass job and I'm gonna throw most of it in the bin after. Um, very, very small quantities. So you really don't need to think about mixing up too much. Um, sanding, a speed file, best thing you'll ever own if you wanna do big jobs. This is for auto body work, where you wanna get a really nice sanded curve over a really long distance and, and get that right. You don't need that, right? I've pulled it out because it's what I use. That with a piece of sandpaper will be perfectly fine. Then after fiberglassing, fillers. Um, if you got this far, you probably have already Googled that you're, what you're going to do. After your fiberglassing, you need some sort of filler. What we usually use is Q-cell. Q-cell is a very, very fine powder and basically all of those little uh, all those little granules are hollow glass spheres. So because that's you know, hollow glass, there's a lot more air there than there is powder. It's unbelievably fine. When you mix that up with your resin, it makes a filler that's really easy to sand and really light. However, what we're trying to do here is a video for the everyday person who doesn't want to have to go and buy a heap of Q-cell. A normal car body bog is okay, but again, it can melt the core of the board. This is only and only for after the board is glassed, after you're 100% sure that there is no holes, there's, there's, there's no way that this can get into the core of the board. This is an acceptable filler. So again, gold standard, buying some Q-cell, mixing it with your resin to make a nice filler, and we'll show that later. The car filler is acceptable, but as I said, don't get it anywhere near the core of the board. This is only for on top of a really good glass job a thin bit just to fill it out. <coughs> Cleanliness. Um, sorry, sorry. Look, one thing that everyone sort of forgets when they're first starting out is to try and protect the areas that we don't want to get onto. Now, normally doing this when you're um, when you're fiberglassing to stop the fiberglass going where you don't want it to go. I'm not sure we mentioned masking tape in the- No, we didn't. Needed, but anyway, masking tape's obviously- No, we didn't. Need. No, we didn't. And, and really, 
it's not only when you're fiberglassing or painting. Two seconds of this can prevent you from getting up into areas that you don't really want to get into with the sanding block and that. So it's certainly something that can help greatly. Now what we're trying to do here is obviously this is not flat. Um, I hope you can see it, but you know, one bit's higher than the other. We need to glass over this and make it flat. We also need to make enough space for our fiberglass to go into. So, Right, so just sanding a shallow V, you can see here that I've already exposed a little bit of what's under the carbon, a little bit of the core cell core. Not too far, and as I said, a shallow V. That's certainly enough to put a couple of layers of glass on. out into a nice even sort of edge there yeah, so, when, so when we glass it we've got something that we can fade out to it's all about fading out what we're putting on here we've got to fade it out to nothing here um, so to avoid a big lump obviously make sure your glass fits before you bother cutting it so there's no point cutting a big bit of glass and having all this extra so let's get it to the shape we want first you're cutting the fiberglass to where you've sanded to, or yeah, a bit past we're going to go a little bit past that, but yeah. I'll, I'll show you when I laminate it. But getting getting a bit of that, getting a bit of the shape going before we start doesn't hurt, and cutting off the excess a bit before we start doesn't hurt. Getting that to conform nicely because we're only going to have one or two layers on here, and then if you want to go under. And then it's going to follow that roughly. So you say one or two layers. So how, what? I mean, it's different. When well, that's worth explaining too. You can see from this board. Sorry, just first you can see the shape that I've cut. Yep. Yeah, okay. So that's going to be our final layer because it it it, it covers where we've removed material. Um, but I should have mentioned that earlier. You can see from this board that it's biaxial carbon. Don't fall into the trap of thinking I've got to have carbon fibre to replace my carbon fibre nose. It's not the case. In reality, for, for impact type scenarios like this, fibreglass is far better than carbon. Um, and you don't need to go and buy carbon fibre at a minimum quantity of, you know, 60 bucks or something like that. Really, fibreglass over the top will be more than sufficient. We're not trying to make this stronger. We're just trying to make it the same as it was before. We don't want any strong points or weak points because otherwise next time you hit it, it's going to break in different areas. So a little patch for that. A little patch for that. And then going over the top with the one big bit to tie it all in. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, so we've mixed up some resin. As I said, two to one. Two to one resins are much nicer. We've mixed up 10 mils and five mils. Much easier than mixing up a five to one. A five to one is, it's fine if you're mixing up a hundred mils to do a big repair, but mixing up, you know, to do a small repair is very, very hard with a five to one resin. So I think the people at West Systems are not gonna like me at the moment, but in reality, a quality, a quality two to one and you can't go wrong. You've got a lot more room for error. Now, the next thing I was gonna talk about that I forgot earlier on, we're doing this in the late afternoon because a falling temperature is really, really handy for you. Um, the, the reason we want a falling temperature is the same reason that we've got a vent screw in the board. So polystyrene, lots of air inside your board. If you do this first thing in the morning and you've got your vent screw done up, the first thing you're going to find is that with expansion of the board, it's going to try and push your repair off. Um, there's going to be air coming out of that crack that we've got or the hole that we've drilled. There'll be air coming out somewhere, I can guarantee it and it'll push your repair away from the board. So, late afternoon, even better. I love doing this in the midday if the sea breeze is coming in because we know we're on a falling temperature then and then I get to go windsurfing while it's setting. <coughs> but now that we've mixed this up, next thing, 
you don't need squeegees and paintbrushes and all kinds of stuff. We're doing a small repair. So very deliberately, I'm gonna show you know, what, what, what's acceptable, right? We can wet this out quite nicely. We don't want too much resin. We don't want too much resin because the strength is in the glass. But as long as that's fully wet out, you know, this is only because I've run out of paint brushes. Normally I'd be using the 90 cent varnish brush from the, uh, from the hardware store. But that, that is wetting out the fiberglass quite acceptably for what we're doing. So like I said, normally I'd be using a paintbrush or a squeegee, but really what we're trying to do here is show you what you can do at home without having to spend a squillion dollars. And you'll notice also, particularly when I put this one on, we're only going to try and wet out the fiberglass to the perimeter of where we ground it. There is no point wetting out fiberglass on top of all the orange paint because we're only going to have to sand that bit off later. There's no point wetting out this part. So we just wet it out fairly neatly to the black part because all of that is waste and it has to go later. Tiny bit more resin. So like I said, I've mixed up 15 mils. So we're trying to blend it out. We're only covering the low area that we created through the sanding and done. All right. So, uh, next tip for the stingy. Firstly, that, because I've used a fast resin and it's sitting there in a big puddle, is going to get so hot it'll go off real quick and might catch fire. So, we chug out most of it. Chug out most of it. And then the tip for the stingy is we'll put our stirring stick back in, back in there. And then that will all come out in one bit so we can use our cup again tomorrow and not buy another one pretty warm in here at the moment this will be a couple of hours cool. oh and one other question is there a minimum temperature that you could mm. do this for the epoxy to go off because for anyone in cold well actually it's worth mentioning that too yeah epoxies and stuff obviously a faster one in a colder climate and a, and, and a slower one in a warmer climate so laminating like this we can use a fast one in 40 degrees but we're only going to have about 20 minutes but yeah, if you live in Victoria and you're doing this in winter, you are definitely going to want to use the fastest. If you're in Queensland right now in summer, you're probably going to want to buy a slowish hardener. Don't be tempted to use anything from Bunnings. As I said, it's the wrong stuff. And definitely don't be tempted to use things like Araldite. They're adhesives. They're not designed for laminating. They're not designed to be wet all the time. Proper fiberglass laminating, resin, epoxy. All right, so one thing I didn't talk about yesterday was the masks, and now we've got a mask on because obviously there's a lot of fine particles that can come off when you start sanding and so forth. Yeah, so particularly with fiberglass, um, you know, dust is one thing, fibres are even worse, so it's the last thing you want in your lungs. So here we are about four hours later anyway, our fiberglass is now well and truly set. Um, just, um, and as I explained yesterday, we've sand it off the paint to try and get a nice uh, feathered edge or a nice beveled edge um, and we've tried to only fiberglass to the edge of where we've removed so if we just take most of our excess off with a blade we'll find that the, the sanding is considerably reduced um, we'll find well i'll show you if we so it's going to a really rough 80 grit which is what i used initially if I sand and sand and sand to try and remove that bit, I have to sand for so long, I'm inevitably gonna scratch over here where I'd rather not. So if we get most of it off anyway, we minimize the amount of sanding. And again, if you want to do a close up, Paul, there's that stuff you don't wanna breathe, that's almost you know, almost all little spiky fibres that you know, once they're in your lungs are not going to be very pleasant. Now all we're doing at this stage is to try and get that edge reasonably, reasonably smooth. So, you know, because we took a divot out, which was very shallow, half a millimetre to a millimetre, we've now filled it with the two layers of glass, we're almost, almost flat. And then likewise the end. And really not 
trying to hit that paint. Just taken off the tiny little bit that was on the edge, touching the paint. And not trying to remove any fiberglass, we're just scratching up that little bit that we put there and make sure that we're close to the right curve. So, pretty much good enough because now we're going to put our filler on it. And as promised yesterday, the little tip if you remember, use the same cup. As yeah, long as there's not too much in there. Actually, I was going to ask, where do you actually buy Q cell? Um, most fiberglass supply places, um, anywhere okay. anywhere that sells fiberglass and so. resins and things like that will have Q cell, and they do tend to repackage it in small quantities. Now we've mixed up the same resin as yesterday, basically a 10 and a 5, so 15 mils of the 2 to 1. Um, and we're just going to, um, and obviously I've mixed that really, really well. That's, uh, that's already mixed. And then we'll just um, make a filler up with the Q-cell, as I explained yesterday. This is, this is definitely the correct product to use. You can get away with the other one, but only if that board is already sealed. If there's no holes in the board, you can get away with the auto body filler. But the proper way, Q-cell. And as I said, the reason we use this is because all of those tiny little particles are hollow. Um, so it's really, really light. So we mix it up with the resin around about a four to one. Um, so we've got 15 mils um, of resin. We're going to put at least about 50 mils of Q-cell. And it takes a long time to mix in because it's so light it wants to fly away. Um, and we're going to keep adding that until we get it to about a peanut butter kind of consistency. Okay, so we've mixed up our resin and Q-cell, as I said, to about peanut butter consistency. Won't quite drip off. Um, that's sort of the consistency that we want. Um, and we really don't need much filler on this at all because all we're doing is just fairing out that curve and filling any little uh, pinholes, little air holes. And that's why I'm not using a uh, using the uh, the scraper or blade or the stick or anything like that to spread it because we just want to get near enough to that nice curve. One of the mistakes people make tends to be overfilling it, like slapping it on like that everywhere. It, there's no point, you're only gonna have to remove it later. So we do want it, we do want it fairly heavy. We've got to work it in to make sure that we've got every little air hole, pinhole. This will be ready for sanding in about uh, three to four hours. There we go. Using the flat on the bottom is very helpful. You can see that that there is almost kind of the level that we that we want anyway when we're finished. So, and now we come back in about three hours. So we're now going to smooth that all off and get it ready for painting. Um, so we're going to use the fairly chunky sandpaper that we used before, which is an 80, and then a 120, um, and then a final finish um, with some 180 and 240. But that'll be wet sanding. Um, that carry, wet sanding carries away the dust and stops the paper from clogging up and you get a much better result. And I'll be doing that with a cork block. Um, cork blocks are really hard to find now. Um, auto body places have things in, um, in a really dense foam and that you can use. But anything will do, as long as you use a block. You'll never get it flat without a block. So anyway, we'll hack into, we'll hack into the curve first. I'm trying, again, trying not to hit that paint too much. Yeah, trying not to hit the paint too much with the, uh, with the rough paper. And just getting that curve back roughly. Yeah, now looking at it, we've got it. I've got, it, I've got it fairly close uh, with the really rough 80 grit on the block. So looking at it, it's not too bad. So I'm going to skip straight down to the wet sanding. I'll skip the step that I was talking about with a, with a 120 or something.
and we'll see we're removing material pretty quick because wet sanding makes a nice paste with the grit and the material you're removing and everything makes a nice paste and helps you remove material quicker but without too many scratches because we're under a finer paper. Now the bottom was a lot flatter because we used a squeegee so we're not going to bother with the really rough paper we'll just get straight into this it's a little bit proud of the bottom get, get some fresh stuff that doesn't last very long some fresh paper And as I said, you'll never get it flat without a block. But now that we've got that nice and flat, we just want to make sure this curve's nice. So I try and do it in between my two fingers on the curve, in between those two fingers. And you can feel the curve as you're going. I reckon we're pretty much onto it, but I'll just check the top. And again, in between two fingers. And then down to our finer paper being 240. If we used a really thick primer that fills up scratches, we could probably stop now. But the finer you get it, the better. Well, within reason. Going down to 240 will give us a nice finish. So you can see from that, there's not much filler on there anymore. Um, the fiberglass must have been at a pretty good level all the way across. But you can see some little white dots and things, and that's where our filler's filled up all our pinholes. So we'll clean that up and go to a priming step in a minute. So um, now that we've got the board nice and smooth, we could just paint it at this point, particularly if we were just doing white from a spray can from the hardware store or something. Um, however, there's still going to be a few little nicks and scratches and things. So basically what I'm going to do now is prime it very, very lightly with a normal automotive primer. Now, in reality, you would be better off using primer filler, not primer surfacer. Primer filler actually fills up the, the little dents and scratches a bit more. But I'm going to show you the, the other alternative in case you can't get it is when we when we spray this, you can see straight away there's some pinholes, little pinholes that we didn't know about. As soon as you get something all the same colour, you can start to see those little defects. So we will quickly prime it, then get it out in the sun to dry, and we'll have a look. And we'll have a look for all those little defects which we will then be able to fill with another another product that I'll show you. It's, when I've masked it, now because this primer is just to bring up any little defects, can you see those there? Those little holes yeah, there? Yeah, it's just struggling to... Yeah. yeah there's tiny little pinholes. Anyway. Yeah. Right. Beginner's mistake that some people do. If I had have masked it right back to where the non-slip is, I've then got to sand it off and I'll lose some of the non-slip. So you'll see I've only masked just past the repair. So I can sand this edge here. So there's no lip, because mm -hmm. you can feel that edge there. That needs to be sanded out, feathered out to nothing. So when you paint the orange, you don't see this line as a, as a hump. But most of the reason we've done this is to just put some 
primer on it so it's all the same colour and makes it easy to see any little defects. And then we'll fill that in a minute. Okay, so as we said, the, the primer's now dry and as we said, we'll just use a, a really thick putty. It's called knifing putty or blade putty. Um, you might find it sold as spot putty in other places. Basically, this is just the paint that we've put on. It's just a really, really thick version. Um, and it's going to fill up all the little nicks and scratches and things, some of which you possibly can't see on the video. Um, the other alternative to this, as I said, you can find a spray can of what's a spray can of what's called high build primer, or even better, spray putty. They're all the same things. They're just in varying thicknesses. So this is the thickest version, which is why I like to use it. But you could get away with doing this as one step with a high build primer or a spray putty in a can. However, this gives a slightly better result, but you don't have to actually buy this. That's about all of them. Rightio, coming back in, just painted it. Oh, well, two steps, we've got the uh, matte white on the bottom. Painted up about probably 20 centimetres and then faded out. And the orange all around the nose. Done and ready for delivery.